Oh boy, get ready for this one. So last week, Terminator Dark Fate was released to the US audiences and it's been out internationally for a while. And judging from what happened internationally, you already knew it was gonna flop and this weekend just proved it. If you look at multiple articles, you can see from Forbes, IndieWire, other sources, I mean, just look it up. You will see that the movie did terribly over the, its opening weekend. Now, as a massive fan of The Terminator, I tried to give it a fair chance, either, you know, as much as I possibly could, despite all the red flags from a terrible trailer and just, just a terrible sounding storyline. And again, I'm a huge fan of the, the series. You know, I own the actual DVDs. I never upgraded to Blu-ray because by that time I pretty much stopped picking up physical media for the most part, at least for movies. But I'm a huge fan, at least of the first two movies. And this is pretty much where it needed to end. This is a great, well-contained storyline with a start and an end. And there really wasn't much room left for it to expand. But Hollywood being Hollywood will try to milk a, you know, fran or make a franchise out of anything these days. And I don't understand why they needed to do it. If you're gonna milk Terminator, you might as well just start fresh. Not try to you know beat a dead horse and you know just repeat the same storyline over and over and over again. Which is what the problem with Dark Fate was. It's basically a rehash of every Terminator from Terminator 3 through 5, because this is actually Terminator 6. You know, they're not using num a numbering system, but this is Terminator 6. So it borrows ideas from Terminator 3, Terminator 4 Salvation, Terminator 5, which is Terminator Genesis, and it feels like a rehash of all three movies, which themselves were inferior rehashes of Terminator 2. You know, the only exception being Terminator Salvation, which I understand a lot of people weren't crazy about that movie or didn't do that well, but you have to give credit where it's due and at least understand that Terminator Salvation at least tried to do something different or try something new. Now, this review is gonna have spoilers, so I'm gonna give you five seconds And from this point on, they could be a spoiler anytime. So it's your fault if you're spoiled. So the first issue that I have with this movie is the treatment of John Connor. And a lot the funny thing is a lot of people, a lot of reviews that I'm watching are talking about this the treatment of John Connor as if it's something new. And unfortunately, if you really think about it, it's not. Every movie after Terminator 2 has made John Connor less of an important central part of the storyline. They, you know, they've made him, in part three, he was an idiot <laughs> for the most part, let's face it. It's like he forgot everything from part two. He, he was pretty much almost inconsequential. And Salvation, he wasn't even the resistance leader, at least from my memory of that movie. You know, he was kind of working his way up but you know, his, he lost his heart and he just, you know, as awesome as Christian Bale is as an actor, just, he, he just wasn't the John Connor that we were led to, you know, to, that we saw in the first Terminator movie, or at least that was alluded to in the first Terminator movie. So he was ineffective there. Then you have Genesis, where they just straight said the hell with it and turn him into a villain, which makes absolutely no sense. And honestly, Genesis might've been a better movie if they, if they were gonna go in the direction of turning John Connor into a Terminator, considering he was the resistance leader and this Terminator had his memories and he was pretty much a hybrid between Skynet and John Connor, that movie should have turned into something like what Robo, the original Robocop was. You know, a, guy, you know, a man trying to find his humanity even though he's half machine now. That would have made the movie way more interesting. And I, I used to refuse to believe that somebody who's the resistance leader just gets so easily turned over and become a Terminator and just say, the heck with it, and try to kill his parents. It just, it was just a, it was just poorly, poorly done. 
That could have been an amazing movie had they just explored his humanity and him fighting his programming. It could have been an entirely different movie. But again, you know, Terminator 3, Terminator Salvation, and Terminator Genesis all destroyed the John Connor character, which is terrible. So, what happens when we get to Terminator 6, aka Dark Fate? Dark Fate kills him off in the first two minutes of the movie, rendering the entire series before that pointless, which, you know, it skips. It makes 3, 4, and 5 not canon, but it still pretty much makes Terminator 1 and 2 pointless. It renders the whole idea pointless. And I'm guessing maybe the way they kind of justify it is that since they passed the date of Judgment Day, he was no longer a consequential character, so they said, the heck with it, we can kill him off now. But it, it just makes no sense. Would have made more sense just to have him live a happy, you know, happily ever after, and just have a totally different life. Maybe he became a doctor or, you know, he, he started the new, you know, Facebook app or whatever. It just, just something, just something else to make, you know, what, give him a proper send off. If you're gonna, if you don't need him to be the resistance leader anymore because they effectively stopped Judgment Day in part two. I also didn't like the fact that uh, Sarah Connor basically tried to take all the credit for, you know, stopping Judgment Day as if she was the only one that did it. You know, obviously she didn't get any help from Kyle Reese or the T-800 or John Connor. It's, it, it's just terrible. Later on in the movie, she kind of alludes to it that, you know, maybe she did have some help, but that was just terrible. It, and <laughs> she should not have been acting like it just it was all her, which, because it wasn't. For the most part, you know, she she helped, but it was a it was a team effort. It was in no in no way, shape, or form just her by herself doing this. So, on that, let's get on to the actual movie. So, now that they killed John Connor, they're replacing him with what's her name, Danny Danny Reyes. Is it Danny Reyes? I forget. You know, the the actress for this is Natalie Reyes. So it's Danny Ramos. Excuse me. Right? So Danny Ramos is now the new quote unquote John Connor and she's gonna be the savior of mankind. The actress herself had very little screen presence, which it's not a good thing considering she has to have a certain charisma to be the resistance leader. And she just wasn't convincing to, uh, for me. I just, I didn't care what happened to the character at all. You know, not I guess the I guess the actress herself in the sense of maybe she's great in other movies. I don't know. I haven't seen her in anything else. But as the resistance leader, I was I was not impressed. I, I just wasn't convinced this little five one thing, you know, could be a resistance leader. Now if it was something like, you know, they didn't they didn't really explain it enough to justify it. For example, you know, I don't expect her to go around beating everybody up. It's just it, it would just be completely unrealistic. Now, if it was something that she was like this Harriet Tubman-like character that, you know, risked her life, you know, in order to, you know, lead people to the correct path to be able to, you know, to, to fight off the machines in the future, that's a little bit more palatable and I could totally go with that. But they never really got into it. You know, she just also, she looked the same age, even though it was a couple of decades in the future, and she just wasn't convincing. Going on to Grace's character, which is you know supposed to be the new protector. It one of the issues that I had with her was they sent her back, and the actress, which is uh, what's her name, um, Mackenzie Davis, she did a good job with the material that she was given. So I have no I have no qualms with her. You know she did what she what she could with the material that she was given. But the problem with Grace, in my opinion, was that they sent her back and they enhanced her, okay, cool, so she can fight off Terminators a little bit better than a normal human can, but she had no plan. If you watch the movie, you pay, pay careful attention and you'll see the plans come from either Arnold's Terminator or Sarah Connor. And even in some cases, uh, for Danny <laughs> comes up with some of the plans. Every time they, asked Grace what she wanted to do, she she pretty much had no clue. You know, she, and she, you know, she has the interesting weakness of, she basically, if you look at this in PC terms or, you know, computer terms, her body overclocks itself and pretty much burns itself out 
after a couple of minutes because it takes so much energy to fight off a Terminator or a machine, you know, still being a human. So she's fighting off a ter an advanced Terminator. She has f pretty much five minutes to do it before she burns out and then she needs a crazy combination of drugs. That's not helping her. So the brawn over brains thing is the last thing you need to fight off a Terminator. You know, let's compare her to Kyle Reese, which was a normal human. But when he came back, the guy knew how to strategize and how to plan. You know, he came back completely naked, you know, got his clothes, made it, you know, follow Sarah around a bit, got his weapons ready, and he knew what he needed to do. And he took the Terminator very seriously. He wasn't stupid enough to just go ahead and try to kung fu fight his way through a Terminator. You know, this and this is a guy who was raised in this future full of evil machines and he knew exactly how to take them out and what was needed and he still took it very seriously and he knew that hand-to-hand -hand, you know it, that it took strategy to be the terminator versus braun and that's where i think that grace fails she's gonna she's trying to fight this guy hand-to-hand -hand and then just run away into into a hiding spot which is Without strategy, I mean, you can only last so long, especially against this kind of Terminator. Now going into that, that was the other problem. The original two movies didn't break physics anywhere near as much as this movie. There's a certain charm with movies from the 80s when it came to things like Terminator and even Robocop and you know stuff like Predator, where there was some suspension of disbelief, but it wasn't this current trend of you know everything has to be you know a uh, crouching tiger hidden dragon slash iron monkey jumping around in slow motion shots it just breaks the suspension of disbelief in this type of movie so the first thing that you need to do if you're making a sequel to Terminator 1 and 2 is to continue the trend of somewhat keeping with the realism of these these machines for example, I mean, even in, there's a line in the movie where Sarah Connor mentions that, you know, Arnold weighs about 400 pounds. And that's true. There should be no reason why Terminators, who are basically walking tanks, should be jumping around like ninjas. <laughs> it, 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 it looks fake in the movie, and it breaks your, you know, your, your suspension of disbelief, which is terrible. It's just not a good idea. It should be grounded in reality, and the the characters should be fighting in a much more realistic manner. Honestly, they should be, again, mostly avoiding the Terminator and coming up with strategies to fight it, even with the help of Arnold. Now, again, Grace was ill prepared, at least mentally, to fight her opponent, which is the Rev Nine. The Rev Nine himself just didn't feel menacing. You know, now that we're gonna go into his into you know into his character you know Gabriel Luna he, I have yet to see him in anything I know he's supposed to be the Ghost Rider which I think Ghost Rider is an awesome character so at some point I'll check him out and I'll see if I like him as a Ghost Rider but as a Terminator I just I, I just wasn't convinced and part of that is because as strange as it may be no Terminator has been anywhere near as menacing as Robert Patrick in Terminator 2 as the T-1000 and that's because it's the most versatile Terminator that there was in its own way. Just being a fully liquid metal Terminator means he wasn't the physically physically the strongest, but at the same time, he, he can get through little tiny holes and he was very good at infiltrating things and you know using psychology to get the information that he needed before he killed his you know his victim. Every Terminator that's come afterwards has just hasn't been as good at, at that. Um, and you know, going on with that train of thought, this Terminator just didn't seem anywhere near as menacing as any of the other Terminators that I saw. For example, I think um, the I forgot what her, was it T three thousand, the Terminatrix from Part Three, would have destroyed him. I mean, simply she she had futuristic weapons. She could control other. She was an anti Terminator Terminator that could control other Terminators. Had, even more control. He could tap into machines, she could basically reprogram them and control them remotely. It was a big difference. Uh, his talent of, and he was basically kind of like her, where the, he was a solid, you know, endoskeleton with a 
exoskeleton that could morph around. Uh, his gimmick was that, you know, he could kind of split into two, but it wasn't ever really used effectively. For example, you know, he would, he would split into two and one of them would just kind of just do like a very basic function like driving or just kind of stand still while the other part of him did whatever really needed to be done. So it wasn't really, you, know, you can't really consider it two guys after you. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't used in, in the best ways. He had, it looked like he had limitations with that ability. Compared to like, like, again, the Terminatrix who could morph her skin, but I mean, who needs to have two Terminators when you can make a plasma rifle out of your hand? I mean, seriously, it's, and like I said, you can control other Terminators, which she successfully took control over the Arnold in that movie as well. And going on with that theme, again, this movie just kind of borrows a lot of themes from, from Terminator 3. Going with Arnold, I enjoyed his performance in this movie and I thought he was quite funny, which is ironic considering this is a Terminator movie. You know, I shouldn't be thinking any a T-800 is funny. He was great, but the development of the character made little sense, at least the way it was handled. You know, one of the things that Kyle Reese made extremely clear in the first Terminator is that the Terminator can't be bargained with, can't be reasoned with, and that they would never ever feel remorse or pity. I mean, they made a, a point out of that. And it, it was even said by John Connor in Genesis when he became a Terminator. So in this one, just the fact that he kills John Connor and then his whole arc is him feeling remorse and pity to turn it around and become, um, <laughs> you know, a drape salesman or, you know, you know, deal with curtains and name himself Carl just was hilarious, but it just made no sense. It just, I understand they kind of wanted him, they, they were kind of following the, the deleted scene from Terminator 2 where you can kind of make the Terminator, you can change it from read only to, you know, to write, you know, to write as well, to read write mode where he could learn. But it just, it just doesn't make any sense. Nobody was ever shown doing that in this movie. So the Skynet send him back with this option knowing that he, you know with free will basically he can do whatever he wants and turn against it just it doesn't make any sense as a character arc and like i said i enjoyed the character and i enjoyed his acting and it was funny as hell but it just didn't make any sense considering the universal rules that were set by this franchise to begin with so i, I, I just don't I, like i'm you can tell i'm stumped right now <laughs> The movie itself, if you look at it as a generic action movie, it's okay. If you turn your brain off and you think, just ignore this Terminator movie, you can watch it with some family and friends and it's a decent popcorn flick, which you might enjoy. But if you're a Terminator fan, especially of Terminator 1 and 2, then I would just suggest to avoid this movie. It's it's terrible. It's, I don't find it to be any better than any of the last Two, genesis, um, two movies that came out before it. It's a lackluster sequel that destroys the franchise before it and doesn't really bring anything new to the table. The new characters were borderline useless and uninspiring. And it's sad that these actors and actresses had to deal, had to jump into this, these roles and just pretty much <laughs> destroy a legacy. You know, now, now they're gonna be known for destroying the legacy of, you know, great two movies uh, prior to it and again you know the movie failed and the box office is showing that the fans are not pleased and that the new audiences that they were trying to bring in maybe by changing up and introducing new characters just aren't interested in this franchise anymore so uh, just let me know what your thoughts are I normally don't really do movie reviews but I just had to talk about this being like I said a massive Terminator fan uh, just let me know your thoughts you know just of course Go ahead and leave some comments below and I would love to see what you guys have to say. In the meanwhile, my name is Ray Command. Thank you for coming to the channel. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next time.